I realize we've been gone for about a month, so I figured we should bring everyone back up to date with a giant cosmic recap. NASA's Lady, or Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer, launched for the moon on September 7th at 0327 coordinated time aboard a Minotaur rocket. Zero ignition and liftoff of Minotaur 5 with left, pursuing a rift about moon dust and the lunar atmosphere. A Russian Rokot rocketed off the launch pad at 2323 Universal Time on September 12th. The payload was three small satellites in the Gonitz communication constellation. JAXA, or the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, launched the Ipsilian rocket at 0500 coordinated time on September 14th. This is the first time the Ipsilian has ever been launched and is famous for its automation. Unlike other launch vehicles, the Ipsilian was able to fly with just eight mission controllers and two laptops, helping keep flight costs down. Next up on September 18th at 0810 coordinated universal time, we have an Atlas V launched by United Launch Alliance for the Air Force. Ignition. And we have liftoff, liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying AEHF-3 for the United States Air Force. Aboard was the third satellite in the AEHF constellation or Advanced Extremely High Frequency Program. AEHF will eventually consist of six operational satellites and is designed to augment and then replace the MILSTAR system. And proving that commercial space isn't just owned by SpaceX, Orbital Sciences launched their Antares rocket for the second time from Wallops Island on September 18th at 1458 coordinated time. Lift off of Antares, beginning the journey of the G. David Lowe Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. Then a little bit later, on September 29th at 1244 Universal Time, after a small delay due to some GPS software-related issues, the Cygnus spacecraft that Antares launched birthed with the International Space Station, making it the second company to prove out NASA's COTS, or Commercial Orbital Transportation Services Program. And speaking of commercial space, SpaceX flew their next-generation Falcon 9 rocket from their new launch site at Vandenberg Air Force Base on September 29th at 1600 Universal Time. One, zero, liftoff. Prop AVI GNC, move to section 10.59. Now this was the first time SpaceX flew the new configuration of engines, tanks, and fairing. All satellites, including its primary payload of Cassiope, were successfully delivered to their intended orbit. Then on October 1st, NASA shut down. For realsies, due to government shutdown, all non-critical portions of NASA, including its website, television, and research centers, have been closed. Fortunately, the MAVEN, or Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Crew, was allowed to return to payload processing for a very narrow launch window coming up in about a month. And finally, remember that very first launch with Lady? Well, on October 6th, she entered lunar orbit, starting a four-month series of tests to prove out laser communications and answer questions about the lunar atmosphere. Now, I realize Space Vidcast hasn't been around as both Carrie Ann and I have been working feverishly at our day jobs, and the cold, harsh reality is that will likely happen one more time between here and the new year. The good news is, once we get through that next hurdle, I full well expect live shows and space pods to return to their normal schedule, and I really, really, really appreciate your patience during these times. Now, if you'd like to see when we're back online and doing different things, make sure to subscribe to our different YouTube channels. We've got this channel right here, the main Space Feedcast channel. We've also got Launch Library, which is the library of any launch that's happening, both live and on demand. And finally, space conferences for your ISDC, Space Up, or whatever space conference we may be able to get our hands on, those are going there. Make sure to subscribe today and you'll get all the latest space geekery right to your YouTube inbox.